Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let's us look at the last subtopic, the largest subtopic of this chapter 2, which would be acceleration. So, you are greeted with what is average acceleration. So, average acceleration is defined as change in the velocity divided with time or rate of changes in the velocity. Rate of changes of velocity. Okay, so V final minus V initial divided with the interval, time interval. Now, figure 2.6 shows a car model as a particle. So, it was just try not to think so big to imagine that when it reached between A and B, uh, the tire might be at the back or something else, okay? Just imagine that it's just a single dot, okay? When it reached B, everything including all the tires, all the body parts of the car really reach there. So, it moved between A and B and then the velocity is labelled as V initial. So, Vx here, you can choose not to jot down as Vx. You can choose to jot down simply by U. And when it reach B, the, the velocity at that location is noted as V final. Okay, So you can choose not to jot down X. X is try to indicate the direction. So it's just a way to let you understand what's going on. Alright, or you can write U and V. U and V. Now, when you are given any graph, there are two things that really matters for how you analyze it. Number one, its slope. And number two, its area. In the case of a slope, you have to go back to what you learned in high school. You will do the measuring by consider the y and division divided with the x. So if we map with this graph, we find that the y is actually delta velocity. Means changes in the uh, y would be changes to the velocity. And the x would be changes to the time. So therefore, specifically to this graph, the slope would down make sense that it will give you a value, sorry, any value of acceleration. Acceleration. Now, how about area? Now, in the case of this one, try to imagine something like measuring area of a rectangular. Okay. So, in the case of this, mapping the triangular, rectangular, sorry, you will be required to time height with the base. Height with the base. Now, mapping it with the graph, the height here represented by the V while the base is presented by the t or should i say delta t and delta v therefore when you times them okay you times them so it's as if the area is resembling okay let's play around with the unit as well speed or velocity meter per second second meter so in short in the case of this graph the area under the curve is presented by position distance travel, okay, or the displacement. All right, so all the x things related to this one. Okay, so let's get back to what it tries to convey. The book has to convey. So it tries to convey. The idea of a slope, that the idea of the slope is at any position, if you put um, the tangent slope, measure the tangent, then it will give you the instantaneous acceleration. In this case, the B is being measured. The instantaneous acceleration at location B is given as the green line. While... The second portion, while the second idea, the slope between A and B, is the average acceleration. Why? We don't really bother about the whole thing happens in between them. 
in between them. What really important is just what is the value, what is the value at A and at B. A and B. Now, to portray the idea, let's have a look at this example, 2.6. We are going to revisit the above later. Alright, you are given an expression of V equivalent to 40 minus 5T that describe the curve of velocity or changes of velocity with time from 0 second up to 3 plus plus second. So, as portrayed here. So, 0 until 3 plus. Okay, we have no idea the exact 3 seconds. But nevertheless, from the graph and from the expression, please find the average acceleration by considering time 0 and 2 seconds. Okay, so we have 2, 0 here and 2 seconds here. So look at the plotting. So you can choose to calculate the slope. How? By joining the two points together and then calculating the slope. That's one tip. So by doing that, you can see that changes in the y velocity, y velocity, sorry, velocity is 20 minus 40. I'll jot it down. Okay. So getting the value of acceleration from what you understand based on equation. Okay. So you are going to get 20 minus 40. This is final, this is initial y, and the time taken is 2 minus 0. 2 minus 0, and you will arrive with negative 20 over 2 second, negative 10. And with a proper unit, meter per second squared. Now, another technique portrayed by your book is, why not you use the expression given? So, what did they do? They find out what is the value of V at T equivalent to 0. Why? Because here A, sorry, A. So T is now 0, you get an array with 40. 40 minus 0. At B, T will be 2. 2 squared. So 40 minus uh, 4 times 5, 20, array with 20. So 20 minus 40, this is what it tried to portray. Go back to the same expression earlier. 20 minus 40 divided by 2, then you arrive with the same answer. So this technique is by, not on, um, sorry, this is not equation. This technique is by the slope. While this technique is by the equation, okay? yet you arrive with the same value. Now, let's look at the second question, B. What should be the acceleration at specific T2 second? So, it's asking for instantaneous acceleration. However, 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 uh, if we look at the graph, the graph is the curve. The red curve is slightly thick. So, at the tendency, if you go by the methods of slope, okay, methods of slope, and even if you did, no problem at all, okay, I strongly encourage these two points, uh, in fact, this as well, okay, in fact, this as well. You can choose this. Let's jot down it as C and then D. I strongly suggest that you consider slope between B and D. Okay. And getting the slope, in this case, will give you an answer of negative 20 minus 20 and divided with 4 minus 2. So, 2. Negative 40 divided by 2 is negative 20 meter per second second. So the same answer as provided by the book.
Okay, so slope, yes. Now, how about if we turn into using the expressions? Right. Okay, now, this is the case where now you need to upgrade the technique where you use the idea of what we call differentiation. Differentiation. How so? Okay, now, before we did the differentiation, let's now look at this particular page number 34. Now, it turns out that we learned something from high school called differentiation and there was another. <laughs> Pengkamiran, pembezaan. Okay, I hold the other one. Okay, now, let's keep you in... Uh, later, we will discuss that, yeah? Alright, something to ponder is that when you have dx over dt, okay, uh, it's also, um, put it this way, when you do differentiation, okay, especially if you have an expression which is x, okay, which is x something, when you differentiate the expression towards dt, towards time, you are actually doing this, delta x over delta t. Seems familiar? You will arrive with v. Okay, this is what it tried to portray. Now, when therefore, when you differentiate v, when you differentiate v, it will just upgrading itself, becomes an acceleration. Please around with me. Hold on, this is meter, this is second. So, speed has the same unit as delta x over delta t. So, differentiation will give you the slope, the second things, alright? Uh, same goes as acceleration in this case, as shown here, that when you differentiate towards v, velocity, okay, sorry, differentiate v towards t, then you are going to arrive with acceleration. So, how do we do that? Okay. This is what we are going to do the operation. So, you are given the expression of 40 minus 5t. So, let's do a little bit here. dv over dt. Alright. So, if you are doing it on a fresh paper, it will look something like this. dv dt d uh, 40 minus 5 t squared. I'm using technique that you learn in high school, so it's still acceptable. So you will be ignoring anything without t, so don't bother about it. Look at 5 t squared, so negative, write it down again, 5 um, t. Alright, the index is 2, so times with the index. Now the value of the index need to be minus with 1, that's the generic idea. So you will arrive with negative 10 t. Hand accelerations, new expression for acceleration is negative 10 t. Since the question is asking you at 2 seconds, it's just a matter of substituting 2 seconds into this expression and you kind of arrive with the same answer as given by the textbook. Negative 20 meter per second second. And don't forget to jot down your units. Alright. Now, technique used by your book. What they did is that, okay, they substitute a probable time later. Okay. So, we have initial. This is the initial. Given. If this is initial, after time has elapsed by delta t, then times now, new time should be jotted down as t plus delta t. So, this is how it looks like. Okay. Adding the delta t to the time. Uh, and then simplify. So, in the concept of acceleration, it should be delta v divided by delta t. So, this is what they did. One by one, their aim is to get delta t, delta v, sorry, delta v. So, our v final here, okay, substitute into the expression and minus with this one. When you simplify, you will arrive with this simplicity. 
simplification lah, simplified value here. Since sin acceleration is delta v over delta t, okay. Okay, so now it could be delta here, Greek value atau symbol je lah. I'm now following the techniques from the books. So delta t. I am now going to divide this with delta t. So you notice that this one, when you divide, you are going to remove the delta t. So, delta T. So, leaving only negative 10T minus 5T. And then, considering that we would like to have a specific time at that 2 second. At that 2 second. So, what really happened is that it's almost no delta T at all. 2 tolak 2 dapat kosong kan? Uh, approximate. But, you can't simply divide by 0 kan? So, 2 minus 2 to can 2 second minus 2 second. No, no, no. Okay. So, um, but really at that position, memang ada acceleration. So, what we do is, we substitute the delta t to be 0. So, this is what we did. So, we arrive with negative 10 t. Okay. So, what the book portray is the correct technique sebenarnya. Tetapi, the green color the green color, the one that you have learned in high school, that is as well, correct, acceptable, nothing wrong with it. So choose whichever. But at the end, once you have the expression, substitute the T, the one of your interest. Two seconds. Dapatlah jawapan dia. Now, let's move a little bit backward. Looking at another conceptual example 2.5. In a form of graphic. So you are given object which move along x-axis. That varies with time. And you will find that graph of velocity versus time. And acceleration versus time given as well. So this is the case. Now, uh, in a simple way to describe. okay, When it start moving, you will find that this object has different in terms of the slope. Now, feel free to use your ruler. Okay, I am currently without ruler. Okay, but I was trying to convey the idea that the v, the speed, keep changing in value, but somehow it try to correlate or convey the idea that it changes at a constant rate. Maknanya dia bertukar dalam jumlah yang bersama. Kalau ni 5, the next one jadi 10, the next one getting larger by the same amount. And because it's getting larger by the same amount, 2, jadi 4, 6, 8, 5, 10, 15, 20 by the same amount. Ha? Perubahan dia meningkat dalam jumlah yang sama. Kalau 5, 5, 5, 5, 5 menaiknya. So you find that you have a proportionality of slope V versus T. And from what I have described earlier, if you find the area, uh, area, area of this, then you'll get the distance travel between here to here from 0 until T A. However, as well, if you find the slope, there is just one single slope. Since it's just one single slope, the satu just slope ni. Take your ruler, measure the slope. There is just one single slope as compared to this one. Ada macam ni, ada macam ni. Alright. So, you are trying to say that or you arrive with the idea acceleration is one value. Nama lain dia, acceleration is constant. Acceleration is constant. A, constant. Now, how about in this particular case? You find that there was just one slope presented by between A and B. And because of that, one single value. So, a straight flat tau. Satu yang. Hmm, okay. Slope, tak ada slope lah maknanya. Kosong lah slope dia. Since kosong slope, no changes in the velocity. We find that acceleration tiada. So, this is the case where acceleration is zero. 
out about the rest. The concept is quite similar. You will notice from here to here, trying to portray that is just one single value of acceleration and going downward. So portraying a situation where acceleration ada, yes, but in negative value. Does it mean negative decelerate? Kita akan discuss later in different version. Sekarang ni kita dah mula go to the concept of vector sepenuhnya sebenarnya. When you start dealing with acceleration, from now on, fikiran kita kena start twisting idea, the value must come with arah. So, bila arah, you will find that negative acceleration might not be similar to what you have learned in high school. That it might not be, it decelerate. It might as well mean. It's accelerating. Maksudnya, negatif A tak semestinya dia sedang nak break. Dia mungkin maksudnya sedang meningkat seperti accelerating. Okay. So, we will look at it when we deal with free fall. Now, let us have a look at 2.7 analysis model when object, particle, any object move under constant acceleration. I repeat, when it says constant acceleration, it try to say that object is traveling at one value, one single value, one single value of A. But madam, it could be that it's traveling at two different A. Then you have to separate them. When we are under this topic, it's a must, you master, for kinematic expressions. What are they? Here you go. Alright, these are the expression as given on page number 39. Now, this expression, if I were to jot it down again, the first one is V equivalent to U plus AT. So, this is U. This is V final. The second one uh, I like not to go for this one. If you, yeah, you can go on your own. I would love it to be combined to the next one. Alright, the next one is actually delta x half u the average speed times the t. Okay, I believe you have no problem with understanding average. But the beauty of this expression 2.15 is that you do not need the value of acceleration. So please, get a grip to this expression properly. Okay. Now, the next one is actually delta x um, ut plus half a t squared. Right? This one. And the last one is V squared, U squared, 2A, delta X. Right, madam. In high school, madam, I used to see that my expression is jotted down as this one. Uh, U squared, 2AX. Why, madam, that it does not have delta? Now, for your information, since we are here, that not that your teacher is wrong at all because sometimes x uh, they get uh, we we have this other technique as well uh, that says that x is distant but uh, let's make it easier how if x since a is a vector then please ensure everything are vector this is displacement Remember earlier when you define what is displacement, it's all about changes in deposition, changes of deposition. So yeah, it should be incorporated with delta. So it should be incorporated with delta. There's nothing wrong with what your teacher have teach you. It's just that I like to make things much simpler for your life onward, especially when later you will deal with free fall. So everything is a vector. Now, the whole expression that you see here, now notice as well something, eh? you might be wondering why, eh, madam, at the x, x. Eh? Alright, if you bring x initial to the left, 
you will find x final minus x initial. Uh, then you will arrive with as well delta x. Yeah? Now, all this expression can be derived from the technique that your teacher in high school teach you. How? By using the graph. By using the graph either from the slope or either from the area. The same. No problem at all. Okay. And aside of doing that, uh, the one that you have just learned currently, just now from calculus base, you can as well differentiate the expression. Right. Now, let's turn to page 40 and look at this example 2.7, which is carrier landing. So, this is a case where there is a jet land on aircraft carrier. And they land onto another aircraft and then supposed to stop. So, uh, initially, upon landing, it's travel at a speed of 140 miles per hour, which is approximate to 63 meters per second. Now, in the exam, I would say that the exam question would stop here. Okay, it will not portray 63 meter per second. So, you need to master the skill to convert it into meter per second. But for the sake of learning, so here goes, uh, they already convert it into meter per second as much. Now, when it says assume acceleration, what is its acceleration? Uh, you are to say that you are to assume it, its constant value if it stops within 2 seconds. So, it lands 2 seconds afterward, it stops because there was this cable that arrest the body of the jet and bring it to an immediate stop. Okay, so how do we solve this one? Since it's asking for the acceleration and they give you the velocity, how do you know that they give you the velocity when it say it stop? So the term it stop straight away when you are able to jot down that the V final Okay, I might be interchangeably used between these two, but I prefer to just a simple V. So, give you zero, that's one mark for you, usually. Lah. Right now, what's happened next? Acceleration is change of the velocity with time or rate of velocity changes. Right? Therefore, this is zero, this is 63 just now, and divide by time taken. However, notice that it's approximate. The reason because kita ada sebut, ada two reasons. You, for you as a student, you do not need to go to this level. You can just jot down as equal, not approximate. It, this technique, this textbook is portraying situation that no, at two seconds, most probable, uh, it's still wobbling, <laughs> okay? And then the uh, the cable itself, most probable, will extend itself because the jet is big in size. So, definitely, it's not going to have zero velocity at two seconds. There might still be certain value here. But then again, this is just an example, Okay, right. So you will arrive at this one. So don't worry about this one. Yeah, approximation. It was trying to portray the real scenario. <laughs> so the next one, if the jet touches down at position zero, what will be its final position? So as you can see here, it used up the expression of delta x. U um, equivalent to okay. You have two expression actually. Uh, this one is half. This is delta x. This is half, which is average u plus v times t. Alright. So, the beauty of the second technique, you are independent of a. But, okay, let's say that you solve and you get this 63. No issue. Let's say some other friends, your member, your best friend, you use this technique. x is u t. And added with half a t squared. And you consider that a is negative 32. T is 2 second squared. This is 2. And u is 63. Okay, no problem. You will still arrive with this answer. However, arise issue. What if at a I do one small mistake? I did not arrive with 32 of acceleration. I arrived with 30, 15, 
which is wrong. So what will happen to my final answer? Do not worry. You will be deducted only at A. But for B, whatever the wrong answer you got from A, substitute here, it will be a fresh calculation. So we will consider the new acceleration that you have wrongly calculated from A. Maknanya kita akan kira semula. So if technique is correct, equation used correct, values yang salah tu dimasukkan dengan betul, calculated properly, new answer will be accepted. So error carry forward. Right, uh, let's just have a look at example 2.8. Watch out for the speed limit. Okay, you are driving at constant speed, 45 meter per second. When you pass a trooper on a motorcycle hidden behind a billboard. So, this is the trooper which is a police. This is you, a car. So, you start, uh, the trooper start seeing you at location A. But when you are at B, when you are at B, then only he start chasing you. He start chasing you when you are at B, right? So, one second after the car passes the billboard. So, this is one second. So, when you are at B, only then he start to catch you with an acceleration of 3 meter per second. So, question, how long does it take to overtake? Overtake represent that uh, pintas awak lah. So, here is the location when you meet up. When you meet up. Alright, how do we solve this one? Uh, this question involves two simultaneous expression. One of it, okay, one of it is by looking at um, when two, uh, when it involves two express, when you it involves two simultaneous expression, usually it involves two um, two unknowns. So what are the unknowns? Okay, you can see here for three times. So number one is time. Number two, the simplest one is distance. So, distance traversed. So, it points out A, B and C. So, it's all about the distance traversed. Alright. So, hence, we are going to consider this. X equivalent to X. Why? Because the unknowns are between these two things. Either X or either T. Since our question is asking what is T, then we are equating the X distance. Now, on the right side, I am going to jot down belonging to distance traveled by trooper and this is belonging to the car. Since trooper is accelerating and there is no U, initial speed is zero, then the expression turns out to be half A T squared only. A T squared only. Now, see on the left side, since it belongs to the car that traveled at a constant value, then constant value of x, um, sorry, distance, distance, uh, constant speed, hence x distance travel would be the v times t or u times t because u and v is the same for the car because u is equivalent to v, okay? They have constant value. Alright, a little bit substitution. It's not done yet, it's not done yet. Okay, just, just have a look. This is 45, okay, uh, this is 3, okay, so now try to look again at the situation. The trooper, if it's travel by using this concept of acceleration, the trooper is traveling from A to C. So this distance is actually between A and C. Now how about the car? The car, if it's supposed to be equivalent to A to C, then you can you can use 45 plus times T alone because this is just covering distance from B to C. Eh? Confused, madam. Now, recall back the question. It says here for the trooper traveling a by 3 meter, 3 meter per second second, this distance it had traveled is from a to C. But during that time, he only started to catch you when you are at this location of B. 
Hence, the product of VT will give you only the partial distance which is B to C. Understand? Okay. For the trooper, no problem. You substitute T, you will find that from here A until arriving C. But for the car, substituting only T will give you only the distance from B to C. Hence, you have to manually edit the expression by adding the lost distance between the first one second. Since it's the first one second, which is between A and B, it should be 45 times 1 second. Now that you have completed almost all the values, almost all the values, then you will find the simplification, the simplified version would be 1 over 2 times 3, the unknown just now, this is 1.5, minus 45, T, minus 45. Okay, we are going to solve using the calculator. Don't worry, you can use the calculator for this technique. Since you are using the calculator, which is based on the equation, go to your calculator. Uh, for my calculator that looks something like this, I need to go to the setup, choose equation and then I choose number 3 for the product of uh, power number index is, the highest index is 2. Eh? So choose number 3. Okay, when I choose that, I am going to substitute values into my calculator that this 1.5 is A, constant to T squared. Constant to T squared is, this is A. Constant to uh, T, this is B, mm -hmm. negative 45. And C is the whole number itself. Yeah. So again, negative 45. Let us look at here. So 1.5 as A. Negative 45 for B and C, negative 45 as well. Where do I get this? From the expression just now, simplifying the expression. So, I will be arriving with two value of T, where X1 is T number 1, X2 is T number 2. Notice that X2 is negative value. Time does not come with a negative value. So, this is the answer, which is 30. So, T is 30.97 second or as portrayed by your book, 31 second. But the correct one, by using your calculator, your own technique, it should be only 30.97 second. Mm -hmm. Let us go back to the book and look at the answer provided by the book. I am aware of the answer technique is a little bit different. But again, you can use the calculator. And you will arrive with the same answer provided by the textbook. Alright. 31 seconds. Now let us look at 2.8 freely falling object. In this particular subtopic, you will now make use of the kinematic expressions and a little bit of modification where the object now will be moving in the y directions in the y directions so since we are going to use kinematic expression kinematic expression we will now find that all the kinematic expressions value okay all the symbol used in the kinematic expressions will make use Okay, this is the motion occurring in the y direction will be in a form of vector. It will be together with the directions. Okay, what will be the first one? Ah, side that. Okay, notice that the term use free fall object. Since it's a free fall object, that is an underlying concept or underlying assumption. The assumption is there is no 
friction. There is no friction. It's a free from friction. Alright, so the first one that you need to consider when you jump into this particular topic is the value of the acceleration itself. Where the acceleration would be um, denotes by the magnitudes of the free acceleration which by the symbol of G value. And G value, value. The value is approximately 9.8. Or what you used to use in high school is negative 10, a round of number. However, at this level, go for 9.8. Since I mentioned that is a value, 9.8, when now later you go for the concept of a vector, you will choose that it bear a negative value of 9.8. This is together with the direction, together with the direction for the reason, the gravitational force, force, force is MA, the force is MA, let me jot it down, the force, so this is the earth, I'm sorry about how the earth looks like, but you will find that the gravitational force is always directed downward and due for that reason the acceleration value in this case the g value is as well negative product okay a negative product because of the direction right that's number one so here it goes now this is example 2.10 okay this is a model that we are going to use and analyze how vector will be incorporated into the kinematic expression. How vector will be incorporated. Number one, just now I did mention that the A value will be negative, 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 regardless the location, the motion of the object so in this case you find that there is a stone thrown upward from top of a building by how means by giving it an a velocity which direction upwards so you find that the velocity is a positive product all right so when it now moving upwards, notice that the acceleration is still negative. While it's traveling downward, indicating by the term position B, after it left position B, or even at position B, the A value is still negative 9.8. While it is at C location, position on its way down, notice that the A value is still maintaining the negative direction. Right. Now, if you recall previous session, I did mention that from here onward, the terms negative, negative acceleration, now not necessarily represent deceleration. So, in our case, in our case, okay, throughout the motion, the ball actually differ in deceleration and acceleration. Okay, a bit confused. Okay, here goes. Alright, when it move upward, when it move upward, notice that the velocity bear a vector of positive direction. So this velocity is a positive value. Moving downwards, Notice that it has a negative direction. Very simple. The moment the vector between V and A opposite to one another, the system are decelerating. So, from A to B, the system is decelerate. Okay. However, from B onward, you will notice that the vector direction of V and Acceleration are similar. Both are negative. Kalau both are positive, 
and we say that it's accelerate as well. So this is the case where from B up to, not up, down to E, down to E, on its way down, since V is negative, A is also negative, they are of the same direction. Maknanya V pun arah kiri contoh. V are, uh, acceleration is also to the left. G is downwards. V is downward. Same direction. Okay, faham? Arah dia sama. Vector dia sama. So, we conclude that system is accelerating. Now, in how sense that it's affect to the value of the V itself. Now, here goes. Look at A to B. Look at A to B. You will find that from A to B, the V earlier start with positive 20 by the right time it reached at B at the turning point at the highest maximum point, it has uh, decreased to zero. It has decreased to zero. So, you see that the system is decelerating. All right. On its way down, okay, from zero, it goes to negative 20. So, direction is negative. It's not that it's reduced in value in terms of scalar. It does, it's actually representing that the value gets larger, going to 20. At D, it's becoming 29. Negative is the direction. And finally, at E, at the bottom of the building is negative 37, which is 37 itself, 37.1 to be exact, meter per second. So you find that from position B right to D here, it's accelerating because the V vector and A vector is negative value. All right. So what we have understand from here, we haven't yet started with the calculation is that concept of acceleration and deceleration is simplified by when you find the vector of V and A, same direction, system is accelerate. When it's opposite in direction, satu positive, satu negative. V positive, A negative. Water balik, reverse. Okay. V now negative, A is positive. System would be decelerating. Alright, let's now start. Okay, now um, let's have a look at the question itself. A stone thrown from top of a building given an initial velocity 20 meter per second straight upward. It is launched 50 meter above the ground and it misses the edge, just misses the edge of the roof so that it able to goes straight down to the ground. Maksudnya, dia tak langgar the edge of the roof itself. Okay, a few things to note when you deal with this one. Number one, number one, the A value is negative G. So, in this case, negative 9.8 meter per second squared. That's number one. Number two, our displacement would be measured in a form of delta y. So, delta y represent y final minus y initial. Number three, uh, and hence, since we have this version, you are the two version of concepts. Kita panggil reference position. Reference position. Alright, according to this figure, our reference position is at location of where it starts, which is here, the y is 0. The y is 0. So, the same thing as you note yourself, sitting on your chair, the point where you are sitting is 0. Understand? To your right is positive, to your left is negative. Down on the ground would be a negative value. Above then you would be positive value. Understand? Okay, reference. So reference position where you start is where uh, is considered as zero. Madam, is it wrong if I choose the ground as my zero? 
no problem at all no problem at all remember this is reference so everyone has different reference number three so aside of the reference number three is uh, you will find that at the maximum location maximum position maximum height we have we must remember the instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity is zero at the turning point at the maximum height it's zero okay at any turning point at any turning point the instantaneous velocity is zero all right let's now start with the calculation all right the first question is asking you by using t equivalent to zero meaning that starting to throw at the time it's you throw it leave your hands at position a as zero second determine the time when it reaches the maximum height reaches the maximum height so like i did mention earlier you must on your own remember that the v at the maximum height is zero that's one way of doing it okay. since that is the case you will find that expression use is a v final equivalent to v u initial okay i'm going to jot down something that's equivalent to perhaps you are familiar with the v final equivalent to u acceleration times t right substitution will be this is zero why because this is located at position b how about you this is located at position t the time would be hence is between position a and b because a and b here is your uh, your sort of reference as well okay your starting and your final position all right so a is always negative 9.8 so you can choose to write down in this particular version okay where a is being replaced with negative g and then once you have rearranged it the substitute and get the answer as 2.04 second give it a try give it a try or you could write it something like this straight away v at b is equivalent to u at a minus gt notice that i have substitute the a as a negative g negative g and then later when you substitute it will look something like this 20 this is 0 minus negative 9.8 no need as uh, any more twice negative and then t so your answer would be as well equivalent to the book portrait very similar b find the maximum height of the stone so it's looking for y at position b y for position b right look at how they substitute you can choose to jot down in this form that delta y okay, aside from what's given by the book delta y is ut plus half a t squared or gonna rub it plus eh so i'm gonna change it into something that we have seen earlier so negative g t squared negative g t squared all right how do you substitute that's another issue all right so this is actually at location a and this is y final minus y initial and the final is at the maximum height which in this case is vb and the initial is a and the initial is a so this is the initial this is the final all right so your substitution would be something like this um and this is zero this is what you are looking for 
Why is this zero, madam? Because that is just now. Just now, just now, you did say that, okay, wherever you start, wherever you start, that's zero. Okay? Right above you, there will be another positive value. Right below you, that will be a negative value. Okay, another example, y at e, negative 50. Alright? Okay? Y negative 50? Okay, we're going to get back to the question later. Alright, um, u at a, okay, notice that my position is just between a and b. Why? Because I am now going to substitute 2.04 second into my expression. Why 2.04? Just now, we have remarks that motion started at A, ended at B. Therefore, time should be interval between A and B as well. Right. And the G is just 9.8. So, that negative 9.8. Right. Any way that you can remember. Or you can simply jot down similar to the book. Delta Y, YB minus YA. Covalent to U A plus T U A T sorry plus half A T squared, but U on your own remember that sorry it's a product of negative nine point eight a product of negative nine point eight. Alright, so you arrive a positive answer twenty point four straight away. Quite clear that Y B is the value itself, right? Now there is another way of looking to this question. What if you would like to use different expression, for instance, b squared, u squared, 2ay. Right, let's play around with that expression. Okay, v squared, u squared, plus 2a delta y. So, this is delta. So, y final is b minus at A. V squared, you add 2AY. Alright. Now, I like you to get your calculator. This is at position B. This is at position A. This is your known value. You must remember it. You will find that you get one marks for this one. And this is 20. This is negative 9.8. And this is 0. This is something that you would like to find. So solve this, yb, you would still arrive with the same answer as 20.4 meter. Give it a try. C. Determine the velocity of the stone when it returns to the height from which it was thrown. It means that the location is from A until C. From A until C. Now, according to the expressions, okay, you have no idea of the time. Okay, of the time. But, okay. okay. Okay, let's now start first with what's given with the book. Okay, let's say that you are not interested to find the time or make use of the time. So, we're going to use V squared, U squared, 2A delta Y. Right, now, regarding the substitution, notice that the question is asking you to find V at C. And UY is 20. A is negative 9.8. Point is way down, but yet we consider negative 9.8. No argument at all, please, regarding this one. You must ensure that is the vector product. Okay, now, since you start at A, then you ended at C. Hence, it should be C and A. The delta Y should be C and A. Since C and A are at the same level, same level, okay, sorry, here it goes, same level, that is the reason why your final minus final, uh, sorry, your zero minus zero, okay? And because of that, you will be arriving that V final is equivalent to the initial, right? Now, the bad news is, you will notice that this is a square root. Okay, when you solve, it's a square root of 20 squared. Okay, and in this case, you have to decide that the velocity will have a negative value because it's on its way down. On its way down. 
okay, on its way down. All right. Now another technique aside of this technique, okay, who can remember something that related to the expression above? Okay, expression above. This one. If I were to jot down again this expression, so delta y u t plus half a t squared. I am now going to use t here. Oops. Okay. Unfortunately, we can't use this expression. We are about to find t. So, no. We can't use this expression. Uh, v squared. V is, yeah. Okay. We can use this one. V is equivalent to u plus a t. Alright. Now, let's try. Okay. I'm going to rub this. We are not going to use this one. Now, how are we going to substitute the issue? So, this is at C, this is at A, and therefore, time is between A until C. But we uh, we do not have this one. Are you sure? Okay, let's just partially substitute. So, here goes U, positive value. A, negative 9.8, okay, because concept of vector, value is now very negative. The T would be twice TAB, and hence TAB is 2.04, then it's also equivalent to 2 times 2.04. Give it a try. For this method, you will definitely arrive with a negative value of negative 20 meter per second. Now, let's have a look at the question. Find the velocity and position of the stone at t5 second. Now, according to t5 second, we are really, really, really unsure of the location. But it gives an idea that if 2 times 2.04 becoming 4.04 second, so here is 4.08 second, therefore right after or below the starting point. Definitely the location would be below the starting point. Alright, let's have a look at how it's being solved. Expression choose is V equivalent to U plus A T to get the velocity. To get the velocity, V is equivalent to U plus A T. Right, so this is U. And the U will be 20. Okay, so this one, 20. And A is negative 9.8. And then the T just now. So you arrive with a negative product. This represents that object is on its way down. On its way down. Right, so similar to the previous picture. Uh, the second one, in order to find the position, so you can jot down delta Y, U T is plus half a t squared. So notice that u just now is actually considered at position a. You can as well modify it, but you will need as well to modify the time. Okay, nevertheless, let's just follow suit. So the delta y is y at the new location, new location 5 seconds to an unknown location. Okay, in this case, they label it as D, no problem. The initial is at A, so at A is 0, at A is 0, okay, at A is 0. And equivalent to, this now, U is 20, the same, A is 5, uh, negative 9.8 and time is 5 seconds. And solving, you will arrive with negative 22.5, alright, negative 22.5. Right, since the question is asking for position, so, asking for position, it represents 22.5, 22.5 below, below the st starting point. Meaning, from the top of the roof, this is top of roof, okay, exactly at the roof, okay, perhaps not tops, okay, exactly at the roof, so exactly at the roof, just below the roof by 22.5. So here goes. Subhanallah. So this is roof. So right here. Right here. Okay. So below of the roof by 22.5 meter. 
right since it's asking for location position sorry position so it's just okay to leave your answer as a negative 22.5 meter okay let's double check with the picture so y here is negative 22.5 meter and you will find that at the ground at the ground is negative 50 meter because why according to the question the stone is launched 50 meter above the ground 50 meter above the ground that makes the ground itself becoming negative 50 because why you refer to the initial position as zero you refer to the initial position as zero all right before we look at the last subtopic where we our aim is to derive kinematic expression by using integration methods, calculus approach. Okay, so aside of the technique used by your teacher in a high school, no problem at all. So let us just recall our memory in terms of how do we differentiate and also we do the integration. So number one, what is differentiation pembezaan, which is delta x over delta y, okay, or delta. So it's actually a representation of a slope. What is an integral? Integral will give you area, alright. So how do you different um, do uh, the differentiation? Number one, okay, number one, the technique is always two things. Number one, please time the index okay so let's say that the expression is what is the expression 4t cubic 4t cubic so with 4t cubic the index is 3 so we time with 3 the index will be reduced by 1 so the answer become 12t squared okay if you need to go back to the previous expre uh, ex expression equation we are going to do the integration but by the way, again, the integration is actually the area of a graph. Okay, under the slope, area under the slope. So, right, 12t squared, you are going to reverse the technique. So, if previously, uh, the reduce is the second step. The reduce now would be the first step. But instead of reduce, because it's a reverse, yeah, anti-derivative, okay? Integral is anti of derivation. Uh, and, right, therefore... We are going to add 1. Okay, so just now, 2. So we are going to add 1. And then, instead of time previously as the first step, this one will be becoming the second step. We are going to divide it with the new index. So 12 divided by 3, 12 divided by 3, you are going to arrive with 4t cubic. The same expression earlier. The last subtopic 2.9, kinematic equation to be derived from calculus. Okay, when it's to be derived from calculus, we are going to use what we call as integration or antiderivative. Anti -derivative. Just recall, um, differentiation is derivative. Therefore, to reverse the process is called integration or antiderivative. In the case of this figure, and something to ponder and recall again, that if you have a graph of V versus T, V versus T, then you will find that the area under the curve is called displacement. Okay, or you're going to get displacement. So what they did and show you is, they showed you that if you can cut it into pieces, small pieces, and then add every individual inter, uh individual rectangle here by adding they are showing you this concept the summation sum them up then you will be arrived with the displacement the total displacement of all is the sum of the area of the small rectangles just now okay so that sum up the whole idea before we start with the integration and because of that because of that okay uh, if they are going to go for more precise value, then the interval should be made smaller and smaller. And because it's made of smaller and smaller, then you find that um, it's almost like equivalent to instantaneous. Lah, instantaneous. And you find this is the case. And when you write it in a form of definite integral, 
you find this is the generic scenario that becoming the the, the limits the limits now is actually uh, approaching zero okay delta t delta t is now delta t of the n is now zero hence you tend to write as t final and t initial as in this figure all right uh, this equation 2.19 okay let's now start okay so this is something that you have seen earlier that acceleration is delta v over delta t or the slope of a graph belonging of v versus t so the slope becoming uh, delta v over delta t so let's now rewrite it simplify it so bring dt okay together with a right so here goes rearrange it and then with the understanding that v is okay v delta v is also so this is delta v delta v is a product of differences in both uh, speed a uh, velocity sorry differences in velocity so with the time limits final minus initial so the one mentioned earlier okay final minus initial all right with that into consideration, we are going to do integration or anti-derivative towards acceleration. Towards acceleration. Now, I can rewrite again acceleration. X is trying to show that acceleration occur in the X direction. Its motion, where does it occur? So, since it's towards T, but T is not in the picture. So, T is actually with index 0 is with index 0. Now, the technique earlier, if you remember, to do the integration, you are going to first add 1 to the index. So, 0 plus 1 becoming t power of 1. Okay, t power of 1. So, the expression now becomes a t. Okay, a t. However, we are going to substitute the limit which is t and 0. So, therefore, a t minus a t and this is t and this is 0. That is how it goes here. When you simplify, you find in the case where starting from 0, this is start and then ended with an unknown number of t, okay, you can rewrite the expression as a t, a t, right? And this expression can later on, Okay, have this version of whether V final, sorry, I'll write down similar to what you learn in high school. So this is V, this is U. So it can be written to something you have seen earlier. V is U plus A T. I'm sorry about this. Okay, V plus A T. Right, so that is the conclusion of how you arrive with the expression v equivalent to u plus a t. Now let's consider uh, with this expression, the most basic expression, when you have a graph of x versus t, when you do the differentiation, you arrive with the velocity. Okay, you arrive with the velocity. All right, how did we do it? Similar as the previous, we are now arranging it, okay, arranging it, and therefore, we find that vt times dt, okay, to be integral because we are aware that delta x is equivalent to x final minus n initial. The same time limit is given, okay. And hence, this expression again can be written as V. I'm sorry that I don't incorporate X so long that you understand X is trying to refer that motion occur in axis X direction. Alright, so X direction lah. And therefore, it's together with T but with index 0. Therefore, doing the integration required you to add 1. Okay, adding 1 will arrive with Vt. Okay, Vt. However, 
this is V final. It will be final. So this need to be add up with the previous expression. The previous expression says that the V is as well equivalent to U plus AT. Alright, U plus AT. So that's exactly what we are going to do. Okay. Now, so the expression now is in this form. Alright, in this form. So U now, okay, rather than writing it in this way, in this way we are endless. Jadi kita going to substitute expression 2.2O into this integration form. Okay. And you will find that the same case applied. So this is U. This is just now AT. Okay, A and T. Alright. Now therefore, you will find that there is actually T in each of this expression. However, this one has T equivalent to 0. And this one T with the index of 1. So this to be added, the technique, remember, added with 1, added with 1, okay. However, if you divide with 1, the effect would not be shown. So that's the reason for this version. It's just UT, alright, with the limits t and 0 right and with that limits you are going to get t0 t minus 0 right substitute the t differences in the t while a t okay hold on i'm gonna write it here a t or you can simply write together no problem at all right so this is t with the limits this is power so when you solve it should turn into a t Power of 2 divided by 2. Right? Power of 2 divided by 2. So, the same thing here. So, what they did is that put in the time. Put in the time. So, you will arrive at this one. At the end of the day, you are going to get on the left side just now, x final minus x initial. On the right side is the one you did earlier. Ut, this one. Okay? And half a t squared. So this expression now becomes applicable to any times limit. Any times limit. Alright, this is some sort of a reflections or wrap up of the whole topic. So go over it quickly and it can jog your memory to understand or wrapping up the whole topic itself. So thank you very much.